but to one of Anonymous's most brilliant hackers, a 27-year-old named Jeremy Hammond. Hammond was the real deal, a radical anarchist as active in the streets as he was online, a hacktivist way before Anonymous was even a thing. And we believe that the internet is a powerful new medium where just a handful of people um, in small groups, just by shifting data around in the right directions, can make big changes and big damage. Any method of disruption at any cost, any means necessary. Why'd you hack Stratfor? Uh, well, Stratfor was a, a private intelligence corporation. They're uh, mercenaries. They're kind of like the uh, antithesis of you know the black hats, right? The uh, revolutionaries, uh, people who use their skill for social justice. They use it for pay to control and monitor and, and basically dominate the world. So uh, it was a kind of a natural target. All my comrades still out there in the struggle, keep doing your thing. It brings me great joy to hear about big shot corporations and government systems being hacked, having all their details exposed to the world. Well, Turnabout's Fair Play, some of the most elite hackers in the world, got hacked. The group known as the Hacking Team is known for selling surveillance software to governments. Now, they're on the other end of a major security breach. Well, uh, well the hacking team is a private company. They're, what they do is normally, uh, from what we know, legal. So they're not, they're not doing anything wrong. The thing that just happened is that this information that's out there can be really troublesome in the fact that people who can read the code and figure out what they're doing with it could potentially have access to the same tools that governments would have to access all kinds of communications. And, and they have said in the past, like, oh, we're not going to sell it to dangerous regimes, but we just showed you the list there of some of the regimes that they, at least according to these files, that they've been selling uh, the software to, the technology to, Kazakhstan, Sudan, Russia, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, and others. So why did you hack, hacking team? Well, I just read the Citizen Lab reports on Fit Fisher and Hacking Team and thought, that's fucked up. And I hacked them. The vast majority of law enforcement resources everywhere are dedicated to monitoring threats to those in power. Not real crime, but threats to those in power. So like 70% political, 30% real crime. The difference between authoritarian regimes and democratic ones is the Hacking Team customers jail torture, and kill, with the democratic ones a gentler ways of managing dissent. Talk to DNC officials. We've also talked to the outside firm that the DNC brought in. When they recognized that there was an issue here, that firm called CrowdStrike has kind of a rapid response operation that came in over the weekend and recognized this. There were two separate intrusions, one of which lasted over the course of an entire year, was looking at chatter within the DNC. Also, a second intrusion that deliberately targeted opposition research from the Democratic National Committee related specifically to Donald Trump. Uh, not content with releasing 20,000 emails from the Democratic National Committee, uh, Assange now says he'll be releasing more material that he says will provide enough evidence to see Hillary Clinton arrested. He's given a series of interviews uh, in which he says that there's no proof whatsoever that the emails that he's already released came from Russian sources. He says that the DNC servers were ripe for hacking, that they're riddled with holes, and that documents hacked over a number of years are out there in the public domain in multiple copies. Of course, he's at pains to say that it's not important where the emails come from. What's important is what's in them.